Hello there. In this video, we're going to talk about LeetCode 2896, apply operations to make two strings equal. The final solution to this can look quite confusing, so I'll start with the readable solution and break it down until we reach the more cryptic solution. So here's the problem. We're given two equal length binary strings, S1 and S2, and a positive integer x. We define a flip as an operation that turns a 0 into a 1 and vice versa. We can mutate S1 into S2 using two operations. The first is that we two choose two arbitrary indices i and j, and we flip both S1i and S1j. The cost of this will be x. We can also flip bits at two adjacent indices S1i and S1i plus 1. The cost of this operation will be 1. Our goal is to return the minimum cost needed to make the strings S1 and S2 equal, or return negative 1 if it, if, we turn, if it turns out it's impossible. So firstly, a few observations about this. If the number of differences between the str two strings is odd, then it's impossible to make S1 into S2. The reason is that we always flip two bits at a time. Now intuitively, this should make sense. If you have one bit difference, it's impossible to get S1 to match S2. Say we have the following strings. If we if we flip the zeroth index, then we'll be forced to flip a second index. As a result, we'll now have a new mismatched bit. And now we're back to where we started. In general, if you have k differences, where k is an odd number, you'll be able to flip k minus 1 bits two at a time, so that they match s2. But you're always going to be left with one bit that differs, and that one bit can never be flipped in isolation. The second key observation is that between any two indices with differing bits, we have a choice of incurring cost x or cost j minus i, where j minus i is the difference between two indices. Take this example. If we have s1 equals to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and s2 equal to all zeros, then we can flip the first two indices to get 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, followed by a flip of the second two indices, so we get 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, followed by a flip of the third pair of indices, and then finally, a flip of the final pair of indices. This gives us a total of j minus i equals 4 minus 0 equals 4. So let's sketch our solution. We define an array diffs that contains the array of indices where s1 and s2 differ. If diffs has an odd length, we immediately return negative 1, because it's impossible to turn s1 into s2 and we define a subroutine recurse index as the minimum cost to return s1 into s2 from diffs index to diffs n, where diffs n is the last index where the two strings differ. We can then recurse through our differing indices. For each index, we have a choice. We can either flip bits consecutively as we described earlier until the next differing index with cost j minus i, or we can flip it with any arbitrary future differing index with cost x. So the first choice is not too difficult to convert into code. Our recurrence relation for the first case would look like the following. Recurse index plus 2 plus diffs index plus 1 minus diffs index, right? Because diffs index plus 1 minus diffs index represents the distance between the next two differing indices. And recurse index plus 2, according to our definition, represents the cost to flip the rest of S1 into S2, excluding the two indices that we just flipped. Now, the second case is not so simple. We might be tempted to do something like this, recurse index plus 1 plus x, since we're going to hold on to the current index to swap with the later index for cost x. But remember, what's the, what's the definition of our recurrence relation? Our definition is Recurse i represents the cost to make s1 diffs i to s1 diffs n into s2. This recursion has no memory of what, whether we decided to retain an index previously to pair with a later index. So here's one way we can get around that without complicating our code too much. Instead of adding x, let's add x divided by 2. And by the way, quick reminder, in Python, x divided by 2 is true division, not floor division. So if x were 3, then this expression would be 1.5, not 1. So this might be pretty confusing with the way the problem is currently phrased. So let's rephrase the problem. Recall that earlier, 
we said that if there are an odd number of different indices, we can immediately return negative 1 because it's impossible to solve. So in this recurrence relation, we are solving for the cost to make S1 diffs i to S1 diffs n into S2, where diffs has an even length. So let's revisit our problem statement. Here's the original. As a result of that conclusion that we just drew earlier, we can actually modify the first operation to be the following. Instead of saying we, could, we choose two arbitrary indices and flip them with cost x, let's say that we can choose any arbitrary index i and flip that one index with cost x divided by 2, with the caveat that this operation must be performed an even number of times. Pause the video here for a moment and verify that the restatement of the problem makes sense to you. Now, let's move on. So at this point, it might make more sense to you why x divided by 2 works, but how do we enforce that we have an even number of single index flips? Well, our recurse function here is recursing on indices of the diffs array, which has an even length. We're also recursing in increments of only 1 or 2. So if we imagine that we're hopping through our array with steps of only 1 or 2, we only have two outcomes for our final step. One result is that we end up on index equal to len diffs minus 1. The other is that we end up on index equals to length of diffs. So if we land on length of diffs minus 1, well, length of diffs minus 1 is an odd number. The only way we could have our final step end up here is if we had an odd number of recurse index plus 1 calls. If we had an odd number of recurse index plus 1 calls, then that means we have currently flipped an odd number of bit indices, and therefore we, missed, we must flip the final bit individually to satisfy the conditions of our restated problem, having an even number of single index flips. Length of diffs is an even number, so if we end up on length of diffs as our final step, then that means we had an even number of recurse index plus 1 calls, and therefore we already have an even number of single index flips. We have now reached the end of the list, and so therefore we have no more bits to flip, and we've satisfied the constraints of our restated problem. Therefore, we can return a zero here. All right, so now let's jump into the code with this readable solution and work our way to a less readable one with some optimizations. First, let's collect our indices that differ between S1 and S2. If the number of differences is odd, then we return negative one immediately. Then we define our recurse function that will implement the recurrence relation described earlier. We'll also define a memo array that memoizes the results of our recursion, which reduces our runtime from 2 to the n to O of n. We'll initialize it with infinity values, and in our recursion, if memo of index is not infinity, then we'll just return the result we've memoized. If we're at length of diffs minus 1, we'll return x divided by 2. If we're at length of diffs, we return 0. Otherwise, our result is the minimum of recurse index plus 1 plus x divided by 2 and recurse index plus 2 plus diffs index plus 1 minus diffs of i. And we save this result to our memorized array before returning it. Finally, we return the result of recursing on diffs starting from index 0, and we wrap the result in an int, since true division will result in floats like 5.0 instead of 5. Now, this solution works and it runs in a reasonable amount of time, but notice that we're actually doing a lot of wasted recurse calls even with the memoization. The result of recurse index is only dependent on recurse index plus one and recurse index plus two. So we can actually get rid of this entire recurse function and instead rename our memo array to dp. We'll initialize the end of our dp array with the base cases we had earlier and then work backward through the array. The result of dpi is simply going to be the minimum of dpi plus 1 plus x divided by 2 and dpi plus 2 plus diffs i plus 1 minus diffs i. Once again, this works, but look at the code closely. Since the, since the result of dpi only relies on the result of dpi plus 1 and dpi plus 2, we actually don't even need to create a dp array at all. We can just retain the previous two values of our subproblems and build our result based on those. So let's get rid of this dp array and rename these variables to dpi plus 2 and dpi plus 1. Then, in our iteration, we'll set dpi to be the minimum of dpi plus 1 plus x divided by 2 and dpi plus 2 
plus diffs i plus 1 minus diffs i. Then, on the next round of iteration, dp i plus 2 will be set to dp i plus 1, and dp i plus 1 will be set to dp i, since we're decreasing the value of i by 1. Okay, so that's how you do this problem in linear time without a dp array. Now, I want to acknowledge that this solution still runs in linear space because of this diffs array here. There's actually a linear time solution with O of 1 space, but that solution deserves a video of its own. I'll link the video in the description if I ever get around to it. But anyway, I think this is a pretty intuitive solution with pretty reasonable code, and hopefully it's enough for your needs. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.